The climate crisis can be overwhelming. Every day we're bombarded with messages about how another species will go extinct, how our air is polluted with smoke from forest fires, how we're going to lose large cities at the ocean front, how our reefs are dying, or how we have to slowly prepare ourselves for the inevitable climate refugee crisis that will follow all of that. More and more, we feel like there's nothing we can do to combat climate change. We think, I'm just one person. What difference can I really make? And I felt that too. And yet I'm here to tell you that there are things that you can do, that every decision matters. All of us have the power to really create an impact with our ballot and with our wallet. And the best part, with at least one of the two, you can start today. I'd like to invite you to imagine yourself in your local supermarket. You're standing in front of the meat aisle and let's say you decide to grab a piece of pork. Now, you probably know there's this issue with meat. It's said that a largely animal-based diet is harming the environment. It's another one of those messages we are frequently confronted with. But in the last few years in which I have deeply immersed myself in the topic of animal agriculture, I've learned that not many people know why exactly it is so harmful. So before you decide to buy this piece of pork in your imagination, let me quickly walk you through just a part of the process behind this innocent looking product. Because like anything, this piece of meat has a story. It came from somewhere and was produced a certain way, and it most definitely has a footprint. You see, the pig that you might be eating tonight has most likely never seen the sun. It's most likely never walked on grass or had enough space to run around and play. Its life was most likely not how we imagine or wish it was. In Switzerland alone, there are 1.5 million pigs at any given time. That's the same amount as there are cows, which we see all the time. They're very visible all across the Alps. So this raises the question, where on earth are all the pigs? The vast majority of pigs are raised in factory farms, even right here in Switzerland. And the space they have for themselves is very limited. In our country, 10 pigs that weigh around 100 kilograms each have to share the area of an average parking space. They can basically lie down, get up, walk two steps. That's about it. In other countries, it's even worse. China has built so-called hog hotels. These are multi-story buildings filled to the brink with animals. And it doesn't stop with pigs. In California, I've once visited a farm where one million chickens were living side by side. The space they were given was not bigger than the size of a standard sheet of paper for each individual. I've personally documented what's happening inside of slaughterhouse trucks as well. On one occasion, again in the US, I filmed a chicken truck where around 10% of the animals inside were already dead before arriving at the slaughterhouse. With broken legs because we fatten them up so much that they can't support their own weight anymore. They had broken wings from being violently crammed inside tiny boxes. And they often die like that, unable to even breathe. And these animals may be thrown out or land on our plate anyway, without us ever knowing. This is our food system. It's a system that commodifies animals. So what for me personally started as something that I cared about for purely ethical reasons, evolved over time. I care deeply about the animals, the living beings in this industry, as I think everyone should, I think you should. But I also saw the wider implications that the system had on all of us. I learned about the impact on human health, for example, the, the effects of the antibiotics we consume via meat or milk, the rise of cardiovascular diseases or the carcinogenic effects of processed meats as documented by the WHO. 
I learned about the abusive work environments that slaughterhouse employees often suffer from, or the increasing financial pressure that farmers are under, rendering them practically unable to execute their profession in a way that many of them actually want to, maintaining smaller farms with more ethical conditions for animals. I've also learned about what this industry does to the natural world around us. I told you that the piglet from our story lives in a factory farm. Now, the goal of that farm is to make this small animal grow as fast and as efficiently as possible. And in order to do that, the small piglet needs the right food. Now, turns out that food is mostly soy. A lot of the soy comes from regions that in the past actually had a beneficial effect on our climate. They were covered with rainforests. In the name of agriculture, these rainforests are cleared to make room for grazing, the cultivation of crops, um, such as most famously soy. And factory farmed animals consume almost 80% of the world's soybean harvest, with a lot of the rest being used for biofuels as well. This process is fundamentally inefficient because we can eat that stuff too. So by eating this pig instead of the crop, we are losing around 90% of the calories. And there are so many animals to feed. We selectively breed and slaughter around 71 billion land animals and many more fish per year. Just imagine how many people we could have fed if all of this available food didn't go to pigs, cows, or chickens, but directly to humans. Okay, so about seven and a half minutes into this talk, I think we can all agree, things are not ideal. Now, why am I telling you all of this? For the last three years, I've been working on solving this one question for Switzerland. How can we make the food system a source of sustainable, nutritious food that serves people, animals, and the planet? What I learned is simple. If our society keeps consuming animal-based foods, we need to fundamentally change the way we produce them. And if we can't do that, we have to change what we eat. I also understood that all of these problems are not caused by producers alone. No, they're bigger, they are systemic issues. So I mentioned before that in my opinion, there are two approaches where you can really make a difference, with your ballot and with your wallet. Which means that the first part is legislation. Now I run a political NGO called Sentience Politics. We're working on the issues of animal rights, animal welfare, and sustainable food systems. Our organization has launched initiatives on sustainable nutrition, um, but we're also working towards fundamental rights for primates in one Swiss canton. But the biggest project we're currently working on is a federal ballot initiative to ban factory farming in Switzerland. Effectively raising the living conditions of animals to the standard that most people already assume they're at. Over the course of a few months, more than 100,000 people signed our initiative and set the stage for a national vote on the matter. It will be the first time that the country can democratically vote on whether it wants to abolish factory farms once and for all. Direct democracies like Switzerland make it easier to do this work. We're aware of that. I've talked to many activists abroad who wanted to create similar initiatives in their regions and frankly, they have to be creative. They create petitions, they engage in dialogue with their representatives uh, or with relevant stakeholders, or they even go to court to change the laws. And most political systems give us options. We just have to find them and try to create change, however small it might be. And then it's ultimately up to you whether these initiatives succeed. With your signature or your vote, you can create change. Moving on, from the ballot to the wallet. Let's talk about the second approach, consumer behavior. 
And you might have guessed, but this is the really impactful one. It's the one where you hold all the power. Research has clearly shown that we can significantly reduce our negative impact on the, on the world with only a few changes to our lifestyle. And of course, there's a lot we can and could do. We can commute differently, we can choose different packaging. Uh, but the 2018 study from Oxford University made it clear. Avoiding meat and dairy is the single biggest uh, way to reduce your impact on Earth. In short, the more plant-based our diet is, the better it is for the planet. You can choose oat milk instead of cow milk, plant-based burger patties instead of beef. Experiment more with grains, vegetables and fruits to reach the amount of calories that you need every day. And hopefully, cultured meat will be available soon. This is the 21st century and there are alternatives for all the foods that we love. So next time you walk into the supermarket and find yourself standing in front of the meat aisle, I want you to think of the baby piglet in the factory farm. I want you to think of the workers in the animal industry and of the impact all of this has on your own health. I want you to think about the rainforest, the species that go extinct because we cut it down. I want you to think of what this means for your life, for the life of your children and the life of your grandchildren. And I want you to realize that you have the power to choose another future. And the best part, you can start today. Thank you.